was told we don't do math that day anymore. I call the meeting to order. Everybody please stand for the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The New Jersey Open Public's meeting law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meeting of public bodies at which any business affecting their interests is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the Cedar Grove Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be advertised by having the date, time, and place thereof posted on bulletin boards in the district, published and or transmitted to the Verona Cedar Grove Times and Star Ledger newspapers, tap into online news, filed with the township clerk, and posted on the district website. Roll call, please. Mr. Pervulovich. Yes. Mr. Schoner. Here. Mr. Valero. Here. Mr. Mandela. Here. Mrs. Dye. Here. The meeting is open to the public for a comment on items on the agenda. Seeing none. Um, first, I want to apologize that <clears throat> we're starting uh, almost 25 minutes late. Our executive session we ran over, and that's not an excuse, but we apologize for making everybody wait. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. How's everybody doing on the eve of the snowmageddon? Good. Did you guys hear there's a storm coming? I think Just so. Just a tiny bit, maybe. You know? The answer is no. <laughs> you get the text. But don't tell my kid. She I doesn't know yet. I commend our superintendent for making the call as early as he did. Not as early as some other people, but, you know, pretty early, I just want to say. It's never good enough. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but enjoy the day tomorrow and everybody stay safe. Anyway. Stay safe. Exactly. Home all day. Stay home. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. A trip to Florida or California sounds really good. You are not leaving tomorrow morning. I'm telling you, I'm Your leaving. going to be delayed. <laughs> anyway. Are you really uh, any to reports yeah, this evening? I'm leaving tomorrow morning. Oh, God. Mr. Schoner. Uh, just that uh, this uh, Saturday we attended the South End FSAs or the South End Schools Casino Night, which was a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of gifts were won. It was Did a. Did you uh, win any? I did not win I'm anything. Sorry. I did. I did not win anything at North End's Tricky Tray, and I did not win anything at South End's. Uh, we just wanted to make sure it's equal. It's, I just wanted nothing, to make sure. There's nothing. No, I did not win. Anything. But it was a lot of fun, and a lot of parents came out. Um, the ladies were there, which was fantastic. Great support, and uh, it was it was a lot of fun. That's great. And then also into the woods. I don't yes. Know also into the woods was this. Only Act One. P piss weekend you stayed for that's right good act one it's true um so it was it was also they did a great job they did a really i mean it really job. was a, a fantastic performance and the amount of work that had to have gone into making that happen is just amazing so it's amazing very nice job that's it all right yes I just wanted to add, Mr. Schoner, that I won one of the magnificent door prizes. Oh, I <laughs> forgot about the pink, and, that the, the summer basket yes, that you won. Yes. The, the, the chance to give it back ain't happening. <laughs> You're going to cherish it always? Or? Always. Okay. All, all summer long. Very just wonder nice. what was in it. That remains no? a secret, apparently. <laughs> uh, I attended our coffee talk. Is this the last one for the, or is there one more? Okay, I wasn't sure. That was wishful thinking? Mm. So, no, it was very nice. It was well attended last night. Um, the FSA meeting at the middle school had been canceled, um, but the coffee talk still went on. Oh, nice. And uh, it was nice. We had a nice discussion. Yeah. We did. It was very nice. Cookies were great. Yeah. Absolutely. Guys had cookies? Very nice. What was some of the stuff mentioned? Um, let's see. There were, uh, we talked a little bit about the budget and the financial constraints, and the media specialist had been brought up again. Um, and just the, the state of the, the middle school, you know, media center as far as the books and things like that. And then while we've recognized that, obviously, we talked about it last week, that, you know, the importance of a media specialist, um, you know, the, the special ed teacher and then the block of math for the eighth graders is really what we have to implement this year. Um, so we talked about that. We also talked about... Were the bulk of the parents middle school parents? Um, you know what? There were parents who were both middle school and um, high school parents. I mean, there was probably like, what, six people or so? Like maybe rounding up to seven. Um, we also talked uh, about some um, advertising that we're thinking about doing uh, in order to get more revenue. Um, we also talked about the need, you know, if anybody has any suggestions for any kind of revenue-producing 
um, ideas that they might have heard in other districts because as you know the budget is tight and we're looking for ways to kind of make additional funds uh, and then we also talked we had a discussion about um, Chromebooks and the, the idea of being one-to-one -one. And, uh, and Mr. Featherman uh, had a great discussion about how it's not just you know one-to-one -one that's the goal but it's being able to utilize the tools and the apps and things like that and, uh, and be effective in the teaching so so yeah it was nice. a good discussion it was just a little over an hour so Right? Awesome. Yeah, it was great. It was nice. It was good. So, and that was it. All right. Great. Moving on. So, we have a few different presentations. We're going to go out of order just a little bit, um, just in the interest of kind of helping people along. So, the first one we're going to do is the New Jersey.com um, High School Video Network. So, we're going to start off with you. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> you. Yeah. Well, we're going to make him stand up. Oh, okay. Yeah, great, exactly. fine. Okay, great. He's handing out stuff now, and then we'll Thank make you. him go up there. Okay. Is the mic up there? Oh. Thank you. Okay. It is there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. For, for the, the camera. Community. Right. This is video taped and live at the same time. There's no school tomorrow. Thanks for ha thanks for having me tonight. I'm John Hernandez. I'm here with NJ.com, and I wanted to uh, talk to you guys about a new program we're rolling out. We're building a statewide online video network to broadcast high school sports on all levels. Our partners would come in, install video cameras on your gymnasium and, and uh, athletic field. We would manage those cameras remotely, and then we would make the content available online <coughs> on a subscription basis at NJ.com. Now, there's no cost whatsoever for you guys to participate. We're going to make the capital investment to purchase, manage, and install the cameras and maintain the cameras. And we're also going to share 10% of the gross with you guys. So I have a revenue-producing opportunity here <laughs> that costs no money so to be involved. creative revenue opportunities. <laughs> now, we looked at the competition. I'm not sure if uh, the athletic director or um, the super has ever heard of NFHS. NFHS is a national network. Uh, their footprint in the state of New Jersey is very minimal. They're charging for cameras. We're not charging whatsoever. Uh, we're building this out right now. We have about 10 schools signed up, several schools from the Super Football Conference, and we're growing this. This is the future for us, video content. And we're hoping by the football season we have maybe 50 to 100 schools lined up in the program. Um, like I said, we're making a significant investment per school that we set this up with. It's about $16,000 that we're investing. We're providing two cameras, two camera sets. So one camera uh, set is on your uh, main athletic field. One camera is pointed towards the scoreboard. Another camera is panning the action. We're managing those cameras remotely. We're making it available on a subscription basis for $4.99 a day or $10.99 for the month. Um, total HD quality, great quality. Uh, privacy is very important to us. You know, I'm, I'm the guy building it across the state, so I'm dealing with boards across the state. Cameras are only turned on a half hour before an event. They're turned off a half hour after an event. Um, on the front end, we're giving the ability to create highlight reels, so parents, students who go in there, grab a couple clips, download it into a video, share it on social media. Coaches and the athletic director will have free access, so they're able to do game review film and stuff like that. We're also able to pipe in your audio. So if you have sports journalism students and stuff, broadcasters, we could pipe in the audio. Um, we're giving you the ability to upload commercials too. So this is another way to monetize the project besides the 10% that we're gonna share with you. So during halftime, if you had an infomercial about the school that you wanted to upload, or maybe you're selling um, advertisements to boosters for your football club, now you can upsell them a video on a live stream. So you can make a significant amount there. The schools part of our network are going to benefit from editorial opportunities as well. Our writers at NJ.com are chomping at the bit to integrate video highlight reels into their written articles. The other day we did that with a Don Bosco Bergen Catholic game, basketball game, and it just shot up on social media. So 
you guys are going to have the added exposure of being part of our network, and we're here to support you guys every step of the way. So we'll provide you all the marketing collateral that you need to promote the partnership, um, signage, uh, banner ads for your website, email templates, stuff like that. And uh, once a contract's signed, I literally can have cameras in here in two weeks. We're not here to talk about, oh, let's get it up in September for football. We want to get it up right now. So we would love to work with you guys, and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Are you familiar with Huddle? Yes. Uh, do you see them as a competitor or somebody you would want to partner with to, uh, to share content? Huddle's or? definitely not a competitor. They're a value add. So you uh, would, I would are you doing something like that with them? Or? Uh, we're not in a partnership with them. It's something that we might consider down the road. But I would say if you're using Huddle, continue using Huddle. Our, our network's a value add into what you want to explain. I don't know. Do you guys know what Huddle is? Are you familiar no, with it? I'm not. Oh, I'm not. I don't know about you guys. Wanna, yes. Okay. yes. Huddle's basically a, a platform where you can you know, grab highlight reel clips and review game film and stuff like that. It's very popular on the, on the sports side. My question for you is privacy wise. You said you turn the cameras on, turn the cameras off half hour before, half hour after. What guarantee do we have that that's going to be done? Um, or well, how do we monitor that it, they're on It's or in off? the contract, and also there's a red light on the camera. Okay. So when the, cam when the light's on, it's on. And is somebody there, or it's just remotely done? You turn it on? No, or? we're remotely managing them. So we have a team that has, like, Xbox controllers. We're panning the action and stuff. So we're managing everything remotely, and they're being supervised. But they're watching it some remotely and videotaping, so they're zooming in or doing whatever, but from a remote location. Absolutely. And the content is available on a live stream, and it's also available on an archive basis as well. And we're broadcasting sports on all levels, so freshman, JV, varsity, and even scrimmages and stuff now. We're going to start doing uh, lacrosse scrimmages and stuff. So any other content also that you might want to broadcast, for example, our cameras are there. So if you have a graduation or something else and you want us to turn on the cameras, we can turn them on for you. We're giving you two camera sets, so one in your main gymnasium, one in your main athletic field. You could buy a third. Uh, it's <laughs> probably uh, around fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars. Yeah, <laughs> we'll talk later. I Let's like later. the way that guy thinks. <laughs> <laughs> That's our question. Well, I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna say, well, especially because exactly, and I'm a baseball. Well, we're only offering two cameras. Like I said, we're doing you know 16,000 investment per school. So we can do two cameras. We could talk about a third camera set, try to get you a discount. That question comes up a lot with a, a lot of schools. Well, you know, which is tough because you don't want anyone to feel like you're the redheaded stepchild and that we're going to do football, we're going to do lacrosse, we're going to do basketball. But at the same time, you know, baseball and softball. Well, that yeah. was going to be my question. Totally Will the camera it. reach the baseball field? If it's at the scoreboard, would they be able to actually um, – see the baseball game? Well, the cameras go on the press box usually, let's say in the main you know, athletic field, right in the middle, and then you know, two cameras, so one's, one's right at the scoreboard, one's panning the action. Yeah, it's definitely a possibility. I have to see what the Zoom capabilities are on that because we don't want the quality of the stream to suffer if it's a far Zoom. But if it's doable, we can do it. Uh, well, the, the cameras are different. The camera that on the scoreboard is not as sophisticated as the camera that's panning. So you can't split them up. So if that were the case, Mr. Mangili, then if the baseball didn't work. So now we're looking at just soccer, lacrosse, and football, and nothing. Okay. So what, so what are we not? Softball out. There's always uh, an I option of you talking to them. I, I think it's something we can discuss and figure out because right. I think this is a great idea. And I think we'll make it, we're going to make it work. I just want to make sure that we are being inclusive. No, I think we, right. oh, we definitely will. Yeah, yeah. No, we right. definitely will. Yep. And John, I'm not trying to give you a hard time. You're trying to take it to the next pass. But I, I have to, we have to. 
I, no, because I'd they're going to they're gonna want to know why aren't you covering their game? Right. Right. No, I agree. No, we can. How quickly could these be up? Two weeks once the camera. So you could, once a contract signed. It could two be weeks. up for baseball and softball. Yeah, we season. want it up now. Yeah. You throw in another set of cameras, you will sign. <laughs> How do you like that? <laughs> <laughs> that the, I, I, wish I, 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 I wish I could. I wish I could. Uh, we're going to give you reports and stuff like that on a probably quarterly basis of what the subscriptions are. And we know that even if you weren't able to push one sub, to, one subscriber to us, that we would be able to take care of it because, you know, we have the NJ.com network, the Star Ledger. We can push so much traffic. We know exactly where our traffic's coming. So we know that we're going to deliver a healthy 10% on the gross. And if you guys are actively promoting it too, which we're going to support you with marketing collateral and stuff, then I think it could be a win-win. This is the business model right now because NJ.com is hungry to build this thing, hungry to scale it up to you know several hundred schools. The business model could change. It could change a year from now. But right now, cameras are free, and we make it totally easy. We're going to scrape your website for the schedules. We don't need anything from you. We don't want to bother you one, one bit. We're going to scrape the schedules automatically turn on the cameras. If you have special requests, you let us know, and we'll be here to support you on uh, marketing it as well. So my last question, when did the checks go to St. George High School last year? Then? Are they monthly? It looked like it was quarterly <laughs> after And it wasn't season. Cedar Grove High School. They come to the Board of Ed. It was. Uh, I didn't catch that. <laughs> what? I was said, ignoring that. I was ignoring that. I'm school. just wondering what's the fun 20. <laughs> It the looked what? like it's it's quarterly, right? Is that what I, I saw? Yeah, then? I believe it's quarterly. Right. Uh, but we could set it up whatever way you want. You know, once you meet, once yeah, once yeah. you hit a certain a certain threshold, then we would start sending out checks. And then you tell us where the checks where you want them to go. You have your own slush fund. It's called uh, New Jersey Film Industry. <laughs> so I just have a question about the the camera stay on until a half hour yeah. after the event. Yeah. Is there a way to turn it off sooner than that, once the game is over, or? Um, we kind of need a half hour to kind of wind things down and stuff, uh, but it probably will be turned off sooner, but we give a, ourselves a half hour on, on either end, just a little buffer. So are these cameras, like, they're installed, like, where? Like, like wet, like, high up in high. the? So, so like, so like the, a, on top of the press box, in the athletic field, uh -huh. in the gymnasium, in the middle, all the way up. Okay. And we come they, in, we install, we take care of everything. Okay. And there's how they secure, like, you know, when they're not in use, they're just uh, well, there. Well, I mean, they're usually in spots where you okay. kind of can't get to it. But if it was a situation, we could put a cage yeah. around the cameras and stuff like that. I mean, we're, we're going to be across the state. Yeah, yeah. So we're in all types of environments. Do other school districts some put some sort of notice as you're walking into the complex that you're going to be on camera? Now, our lawyers scrubbed it, and we feel like it's newsworthy events, and we don't need any releases, and okay. we don't plan on proceeding with that. If you guys are already having them sign releases in the beginning of the sports season, and you want to add video streaming to that, that's fine, too. What about the maintenance? We maintain it. We take care of everything, everything. What, what happens is when you sign a contract, the first step is a site survey. So. Several, within a week, we'll come in, our technicians, our engineers will do a site survey with you, and then we'll schedule the installation shortly afterwards. You mentioned graduation, and you did a few graduations on the football field. How is that, how is that on the field? Is that something that people buy that afterwards? Would we, how would you know that I have to reach out to you and say, hey, look, graduation's at 6.30 on the 20th? Well, you would have to reach out to us. We're not automatically going to stream a graduation. That would be a special request that you would request. We're, we want to do it, and we would probably offer it for free anyway. So we probably wouldn't charge for that event. To the parents? What? To the, that's pretty nice. Yeah, on the front end, yeah. Wow. So I have a question. It says video rights ownership. You retain the rights to your video. So it's, how does that work? It's ours? Or? You, 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 retain, you, you have the rights. You could do whatever you want with the content. We're but basically we're licensing it from you to do the live stream. To do the streaming. Yeah. To do the broadcasting. Exactly. That's right. And then do you you hold on to it after the fact, after you've done streaming? Well, it's, what being, to it's it? being archived. Right. So, it's, so people could go in and play back any games. Right. And so we're about so data, a year we're later, sorry, that someone wants yeah. to go back and watch. Exactly. It's Verona versus Cedar Grove. Exactly. What about data storage, though? That's kind and of Verona's stuff. in. We signed Verona. Yeah. They're, they're, they're going to go live. They're already live. Yeah. I know. Data storage. That's going to get a 
it's going to pile up in a hurry. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. So a question. So you log into NewJersey.com, I'm assuming, correct? Yes. So exactly. we can actually tell, like, family and people that live in other parts of the country to watch this game. Absolutely. So go. what happens is you tell that person across the country when they log, when they log in, they have a drop-down menu of what school they want the 10% to be allocated right. to. And it's a one-day pass, so they can watch one, one day game or a monthly and that's pass. it. Right. Great. Would you be able to provide us something that you could blast out to our parents? Absolutely. So We're going to provide you all the email templates that you need. We're going to provide you signage for outside in your gymnasium, banner ads for your website, postcards, business cards to hand out. And uh, if you have any other things that you may need, just let us know. We'll take care of it for you. Also, social media posts, too. We'll put you You know, we could also put your advertisement on our field for X amount of dollars. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Yeah, well, that might be an opportunity. What do you think? Un yeah. Underneath the uh, scoreboard. Absolutely. <laughs> That's a prime spot, though. I, I know, but he's a little extra. This man's, <laughs> well, this man's uh, the business model is to. Uh, the model could change. I think you gotta Mr. jump DeVita in now. I, 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 can I, change. I think Mr. DeVita had a question. Yeah, I guess. Yes. I said one question. When you say hand over installation, say that you where you want to put the camera, you have to. There's no power. You have um, to run cables or Ethernet, whatever. I mean, do you, you handle all those folks? Yeah, also? we. Uh, there are some technical requirements mm -hmm. that we need, and you know, obviously we need some sort of power there. Right. Um, some schools usually have electricians on staff, so we'll work with you with that. We've been in all different types of situations in regard to having cameras with no power, you know. So we'll work with you on that. We're we're very hungry to get this thing up and running, you know, soon. And, and Verona's in; they're live. West Essex in. We're talking to all the super football conference schools. A lot of them are starting to come in. Don Bosco's in. The big Catholic schools are coming in. This is going to be a really powerful network. Um, and it's going to end up being the biggest network across the country in regards to state wise. As you begin to grow, how do you foresee the monthly and, uh, and the daily uh, subscription revenue coming in? Because right now it's the Oh, okay, the subscriptions, yeah. Um, they're going to hold tight at that number. I mean, we did a lot of modeling to figure out what the sweet spot is on the pricing. So we feel good about that pricing, but we reserve the right to change that, you know, as we see fit. But I would say for the immediate, for the next year, it's going to be there. Thank you. Just, Thank you. Just yeah. a, one more question. I'm sorry. You it said if somebody from across the country wants to, you know, review an archived event, they can pull down the school. But you said that they can choose where the 10 percent goes. Yeah. Or does it automatically go to Cedar Grove because it's our archived video? Well, they're paying for access across the entire network, so they just don't have access to your content. They have access to everything else. But when they uh, log in initially, they can designate where that 10 percent will go to so hypothetically they could designate it to not go to cedar grove right definitely okay something to think about that's all or if people just don't designate it anywhere then it's their revenue i'm assuming well you have to pick something oh you have to. in yeah, order exactly. to go forward exactly. you have to pick oh. okay so, oh. so then also, you may pick <laughs> up you may yes. pick up subscribers from away teams that Correct. aren't on the network. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. No, thank you for coming. Thank you. All right. Next up, uh, we're going to skip the budget for now, and we're going to go to the Share Nine One One presentation.
think my. Uh, <coughs> are we on? Yeah, that's just for the home audience. Yeah. So you're good. I think my first question is: as a former board member, how did I forget to eat dinner before I came here? <laughs> <laughs> Practice. Yes. Right with you. Right with you. And I went to the supermarket before I got here thinking I could bring food to our executive session. I couldn't even get in the place because of tomorrow's storm. Oh, I didn't right. think of that. Everybody needs their milk and bread. I couldn't even get online. I'm like, what am I doing? Could you imagine if there was a service that would bring that food to you? Yeah. Simply gourmet. Amazing if I, could I was so upset because I grabbed sushi real quick. I'm like, oh, the line. Oh, forget it. Oh, I'll never absolutely. make it to the board meeting. <laughs> Sushi sounds good, though. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> he makes it sound like he gets you on time, too. <laughs> well, it made me a little yeah. extra late. My name is Ray Bailey with Share 911. Uh, what we're going to do tonight is do a, a demonstration of Share 911 and, and how it will help your, your school and your staff uh, during emergencies. Now, my background is law enforcement. I'm a retired uh, deputy chief of the Ramsey Police Department. I've been with Share 911 for about four years now. The product itself was actually invented by Eric Endress, a volunteer firefighter, who set out to really to solve a problem um, that first responders have, and that is inside a large building where there are a lot of people, there's a lot of information that's not getting out to the first responders. So Eric set out to uh, use the technology that's available in schools today to connect everybody together during an emergency, be able to notify the people that have to be notified including law enforcement, in that moment that, that somebody sees something happening. I will be approaching this from um, an active shooter perspective today, because that is my background. Eric, a volunteer firefighter, would possibly approach this from a different uh, uh, perspective. And I'll talk about some of those perspectives as we're going forward. Share 91 is a web application uh, while we're building an app, a mobile app that you would download from the a Apple Store, uh, we don't have an app yet. We are a web application, purposely built that way because we <coughs> want people to be able to access us from any device that has an internet connection. So we do know from the data that most of our users will use a mobile device, um, but they don't have to. They can use a tablet, a laptop, a desktop. So anything that has a browser that can connect to the internet um, they can have access to the system. One of the questions I get with the mobile uh, platform is that, you know, if people have a flip phone, flip phone, can they still use our product? And the answer is yes, because what they would do is they would sign in on a regular desktop or a laptop, and then they would uh, enter their information. If they want to provide their mobile number, they they would at least get the text messages to their phones. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm actually going to just walk us through step by step. Um, stop me if you have any questions. I do these presentations a lot. I do all of the implementation around the country. So uh, on any given day, I'm doing three or four presentations. So I can get on that you know, roll. <laughs> so if I'm going a little fast, just stop me. Okay. So I'm going to take this from a, just a very simple use case here. And everything you're going to see is uh, permission-based. So in this scenario here, I'm going to act as if I'm the principal of the high school. So if I'm the principal of the high school, if you think about the way a typical emergency happens, and I'm, I'm fortunate that it, because of my background, I get to travel around the country. I participate in a lot of tabletop exercises, a lot of full-scale exercises. I do a lot of training with our customers. In a very typical tabletop exercise in an active shooter situation, it kind of plays out like this in most schools. The, there's going to be an emergency in the school, and a teacher's going to see that emergency. And in most schools in America, the teacher still is going to contact the principal to say, hey, I'm having an emergency. So what does the principal do? No matter how many times you tell principals, you should probably not go investigate that yourself. That's what they're going to do anyway. They're going to go investigate it themselves. So they're going to go down to the other end of the school. They're going to go, yep, that's an emergency. And in most schools, the principal has to get to the main office or get somebody in the main office to get on that microphone that's been sitting on that desk since 1975, get on that microphone and go lockdown, lockdown, lockdown. And in most training exercises, the principal will do the right thing and delegate the next step, which is call 911, to somebody in the office. So they'll point to somebody in the office and they'll go, call 911, we have this emergency. 
that person's going to call 911. When that person gets in touch with the 911 operator, if they do that in my hometown of Ramsey, New Jersey, that call actually goes to Ridgewood, where a Ridgewood operator is going to pick up the phone and go, 911, where's your emergency? And then the dispatcher is going to ask a series of questions that they've been trained to ask. Name, address, what do you see, what's your callback number, a lot of information. And then that dispatcher is going to go, okay, that is an emergency. And then they're actually going to switch that phone call over to Ramsey. And then the Ramsey operator is going to pick up the phone and go, Ramsey 911, where's your emergency? And you're going to be like, and then you're going to ask those, answer those questions again. That dispatcher is going to dispatch Ramsey cops to the, to the high school. Cops are going to get there, and they're going to have to decide where to search. Now, what we do know is that the police officers all over the country, if they hear it or see it, they're going to move incredibly quick to the threat. We know that because that's what we've been trained to do for a very, very long time. But if they don't hear it or see it, they're going to have to start searching the building. And that's going to take time, time that we may not have. So what did Eric do to make that faster? Eric did that, what he did to make that faster was he said, listen, if the teacher sees something and they're authorized to do it, they could put the school into lockdown. And when they do that, it's going to notify everybody in that building, the principal and law enforcement, in that second. And we have real examples of police officers showing up at the school in 45 seconds. I think it's Manalapan English Town was our fastest response that we have recorded. 45 seconds. Why? Because when that teacher hit that button, that police officer on patrol got the alert to his phone. We don't know how you can get a cop to a school faster than that. So back to our case here where the principal walks down to the other end of the building and he sees an emergency and he says, you know what, I need to lock this building down. So taking his phone out, he can get to share 911, hit lockdown. He could type a message here. I'm just going to write test. And he could broadcast an alert. That alert is going to go out as a text, an email, and a desktop pop-up. I don't have the desktop pop-up installed on this uh, laptop. Mr. Kinney just got he it. Got it. Great. The high school guy didn't get it. So, um, this text would go to everybody that's in the high school. It would go to your leadership team, and it would go to law enforcement if they're connected to the system. Whoever is put into the system as far as being part of this. Correct. In addition to that, um, again, we have that desktop pop-up software. The desktop pop-up software, what's great about it, it runs in the background. Once a teacher signs in, they're always signed in. It pops up. It's a big, giant yellow screen. If their speakers are on, it will make an audible noise. In addition to this, we don't want to replace any current policies or procedures that you have. If somebody can make the PA announcement, we still want the PA announcement made. If somebody can call 911, we still want 911 called. We, do, we know that we can do all of that faster, but we like the redundancy in the communication. So if we can continue to make those, uh, if, to reach out, we still want that to happen. So question, so the, the science teacher does it. Do, do you know that this, what's, what person initiated the, uh, the initial thing? Yes. Okay. Uh, nothing on the system is anonymous. That's what I was wondering, okay. Thank you. Yep. Right on the feud. Okay, no, it's, 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 yeah, it shows, it shows who, because like I said, you, you're the social studies teacher, the, uh, you're the kindergarten teacher that says this is what's going on. Because we're based in New Jersey, I would actually uh, most likely come here to do the training of your staff. And what I'm going to tell your staff to do is after they get this alert, no matter how they get the alert, the text, the pop-up, the PA, the first thing I'm going to tell them is take the action in the alert and get safe. And that's the most important thing, is for them to get themselves and their kids safe. After it's safe to do so, we want them to check in. And this really is our secret sauce, if you will. The teachers have the ability to check in and tell us what their status is. Or a volunteer in the audience will help. <laughs> The statuses that they can check in is threat nearby, fire, smoke, medical condition, I'm okay. If they check I'm okay, they can say they're secure. 
that they've evacuated or that they're off site. I'm going to say threat nearby. I'm going to pick a location. Our system does not use GPS. We do not track anybody's phone because GPS inside a building like this is not as accurate as first responders need it. I need to know exactly where you are. So we're going to use your floor plans and enter locations. I can type a message in here. And I can check in. Perfect. Your teachers will be able to account for their students. Uh, what Eric realized very early on was that there's no good way to account for students during a lockdown. When the teachers are locked down and in the hard corner, there's no way for them to get out information like what students miss. Doing this without my glasses on, so I'm hoping I have spelled my son's name right. And they land on this screen called Live View. The red card. Why is this red card important to your staff? This red card is important to your staff because we're telling your staff in room 101 there's a threat nearby. It's on the first floor of the C side of the building, which every firefighter in the country knows is the back of the building. And we know that door 4 is closest to room 101. It's important for your staff to know this because if your staff finds themselves in an unsecure place and they want to exit the building, they need to know which way to go. They need to avoid this. If they're in room 102 and they can't lock their door, they need to know they need to barricade. But this gives them what we call situational awareness. It's important to the police department. So when the police department rolls up here, they can see right away that there's something happening in the school and where that threat is so they know where to begin their search. You see people's names on the cards. Again, nothing is anonymous. The phone numbers are only shared with the leadership of the building the school district and law enforcement. We don't share everybody's phone number. But this number gives the law enforcement officers the ability just to tap it and call the person. We see that we have missing students here. And we can crowdsource to say what students are being accounted for. So every event that we have, these yellow cards will go from 1 to 8, back to 2, back to 5. As kids are reported missing and other teachers are saying, you know what, I have that student with me. So here I'm going to account for Rob by saying report found, and his card moves down to report found. Rick, can I ask a question? Yeah. The, 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 name, the names of the students, um, is that a pre-populated list that they could select from, or they have to key in the person's name? Uh, they key name? in their, the person's key name. The name. These categories on the bottom here, we keep collapsed until we need them. I apologize for my back here. I can see that one student was reported found and who did that reporting. I can see that we have one staff member that has not checked in. And I can see that I have one staff member that has reported that they were off site. So the question is, why didn't Michael check in? It could be because he's hurt. Maybe he just took my advice, which was get safe and stay safe. And that's what he's doing, which is fine. If we can get 85, 95% of your staff to account for themselves, that's a lot of building that law enforcement doesn't have to search for the individuals. During the event, we can broadcast a message. And this teacher was act this was built at the request of a teacher. He said, when I'm in lockdown for five minutes, it feels like five hours. And I can send out this message here. In every real world event that we have, and we're in thousands of schools across the country right now, and we have real world events on a daily basis. Every real world event that we have, um, the message feature is used a lot. Our everyday real world emergencies are not active shooter incidents, thank God. We have lockdowns, especially in our California districts, um, and lockouts on a pretty regular basis in our California districts. But our everyday emergencies are not active shooter stuff. It's the stuff that you're actually dealing with every day. So if you're the high school principal, and you have an unannounced fire alarm at 9 o'clock in the morning, and your staff, they evacuate, and the fire chief gets there, and it's 32 degrees out, and you're 15 minutes into this unannounced fire alarm, your staff would love you to be standing next to the fire chief, take your phone out, and be able to text a quick message to everybody that's standing outside and say, you know what, fire chief says it's going to be five more minutes. 
or the fire chief said it's going to be another hour, but he has cleared us to go back to the gym. Giving your staff those type of updates during our everyday emergencies is valuable, and your staff will really, really appreciate it. The last thing that happens on the system is the all clear, which can only be done by a select few people. Once the system clears, it resets. People get the text messages that the situation is clear. And as soon as it is done, we can generate what we call an after action report, which will be a real time accounting uh, of everything that happened. Which maybe I did not issue the all clear. Oh, I did. one from a couple of days ago. So these after action reports are available uh, for your review after the incident's over so that you can see what happened. They're very valuable during our uh, drills. The system runs in active mode and when your staff, they want to conduct a drill, it goes into drill mode so that they know it's a practice session. Our schools that practice with it once a month, which is easy for our New Jersey customers because you do two drills a month, uh, become very proficient at it. Uh, it takes two or three drills to get very proficient, but they get very proficient at it. So that's basically the system. You know, it's just it's a platform to connect everybody together that needs to be connected during these emergencies. It's meant to be as simple as we can keep it, but as fast as we can make it, uh, so people can be notified. And that's what we do. Um, so questions. <laughs> By the way, I kind of ID'd you guys as the principals when I was sitting back here. No, I, I absolutely agree with what you're saying. And what I see with principals, because I'm on, on site for schools all the time, is principals are actually the only person in the building probably not checking in because you're doing a million different things. Um, but during a real-world emergency, you'll be doing a million different things, and it's about delegating to those people. Um, so there will be certain tasks that you're going to delegate to your office staff to do for you. Uh, correct. Right, but your workload is so different during an emergency than your teachers. Once your teachers have your students safe, they have an opportunity to check in. Anyone else? All right. What is this? No, but what is this, like um, a service that we? That we're looking into, yes. Mr. Kinney, uh, our safety, what's your new title? I'm sorry. The security safety specialist um, brought in as, a, as another option in terms of what some people are using. So, perhaps we'll have to take a look at it. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Thank you we very appreciate much. it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving along. The next board presentation is the preliminary budget, curriculum, athletics, buildings, and grounds. I believe Mr. DeVita, our BA, will be Quick. presenting. Of course there is. It's out of the um, contest. He's testing his own equipment and contacts. Each, each person is featured in the contacts.
All right. I'd like to thank everybody for attending tonight. Uh, thank our administrative team for uh, coming. Um, we've worked together over the last couple of months uh, to put this budget together. Um, so here's our, our proposed product. Um, in uh, um, tonight's PowerPoint, I'm just going to be covering um, the, the instructional part of the budget, um, athletics, administrative, uh, buildings and grounds, transportation and benefits. Um, at our last meeting, um, we went over uh, special education and the technology budget. So this is um, part of the budget that we're going to go over now. Um, this slide is just a, a summary of um, the areas that I'm just going to be going into um, in the presentation here. Um, in our slides um, down in the, the future here, we're, um, I'm going to be going into a little bit more, more detail of them. Uh, but this is everything from regular instruction, co-curricular activities, um, health guidance, uh, media services, instructional administration, uh, maintenance, transportation, and benefits. Um, and th this just gives the uh, summary of uh, the current year costs uh, versus uh, the proposed costs for next year. Uh, first is uh, the regular instruction uh, budget. Uh, th now, th this includes all of our uh, regular uh, instruction uh, staff here. Um, it doesn't include any uh, special ed education staff or anything like that. It's all of our uh, salaries for our uh, K-12 teachers, um, includes any uh, substitutes, any class coverage, morning duty, uh, detention supervision, all that is, is included here. Um, it includes um, some services, our uh, software uh, products. Um, that's included all, all the supplies for um, every single school and uh, department and program is here. Uh, textbooks um, is here. Um, and as you can see, the, uh, the final numbers are, are at the bottom here. It, it uh, has increased um, uh, slightly, um, mainly because of the uh, salary increase from uh, last year. Uh, next is the uh, co-curricular activities and athletics. Um, this includes all of our um, advisors, all the salaries that we pay to them uh, for all of the uh, clubs. Um, for example, the drama club, uh, you know, key club or any club like that. Um, we also have our um, uh, athletic salaries for all of our uh, coaches for every season is included in here. Um, any uh, um, our professional service amount, that's the um, part of that amount is uh, the amount that we uh, pay um, for our ice hockey program. Uh, we have a um, we do a, a joint program with um, uh, Passaic Valley, um, so part of that um, cost it is included in here. Um, and all reconditioning and repair of all of our equipment, um, all the supplies that they get for um, every sport, um, any dues and uh, uh, game expense is more uh, the the expense for um, to operate the uh, game. Um, you know, if we have a site supervisor, if we have um, a uh, somebody managing the clock or anything like that, um, that's included here. Uh, the one item that's not included in here is uh, transportation. Uh, that I'll go over that in our uh, transportation slide. Um, uh, th th that'll include all the, um, uh, you know, the, the trips and all that to all the away games. Uh, next we have health services. This is all of our nurses uh, throughout the district. Um, uh, we have all the, the uh, fee for the um, our school physician um, is included in here, all the nursing supplies um, and any uh, uh, repairs to any um, um, our uh, odometers, any um, uh, AEDs and all that is included in here. Uh, next, our guidance services. Uh, this includes all of our uh, guidance counselors throughout the district. Um, a portion of our um, uh, uh, genesis is included in here uh, for all of our uh, student software um, and any supplies um, for, the, um, for the guidance counselors. Uh, next is our uh, media services and uh, library. Um, this is all of our um, media specialists. Um, their salaries are included in here. Um, and uh, all the supplies, any uh, uh, books um, that we have for the elementary libraries or any uh, subscriptions or anything like that is included in here. Uh, instructional staff training. Uh, this is our uh, part of our district supervisor salary is in here. Um, and we have any um, uh, services that we uh, we use f for the district, um, uh, Performance Matters or uh, Movie Max or anything like that is included in here. Um, any uh, uh, supplies for uh, uh, curriculum uh, related is included in here. Um, this is our uh, administrative salaries. Um, this is all of our salaries in here um, for uh, the school sal uh, uh, principals, VPs, um, superintendent's office, the business office. It's all included in here. Any um, uh, professional salaries, such as uh, legal, um, our auditors, um, any architect expenses. Uh, we do have uh, certain expenses for our um, that we pay for our, our uh, policy, um, a consultant, um, 
uh, so any any outside of um, uh, professional services that we pay for um, com comes out of here. Uh, our, our communication is all of our uh, telephone lines, our internet service, um, and any uh, um, supplies for any um, uh, general uh, supplies for office supplies or uh, paper, anything like that is included in here. Um, then we have our, um, uh, uh, the Board of Ed dues is included in here. That, that's the fee that we pay to New Jersey school boards. Uh, that, that's um, a, a required amount that we have to pay. Um, so that's included in here. Uh, next is our buildings and grounds and uh, security um, budget. Uh, this includes all of our custodians, uh, our grounds um, workers, um, our, our supervisor of buildings and grounds and his assistant. Their salaries are included in here. Our purchase services are all of the um, uh, areas that we contract out, um, uh, for any, any boiler repair, HVAC repair, um, you know, any of the, the, the uh, geese patrol or anything like that um, that's used to maintain the building or uh, repair the building is included in here. Um, insurance is any um, property and liability insurance. Um, somebody trips or um, anything like that, somebody sues us, um, th th that's where the, the insurance comes out of. Uh, supplies is all the custodial supplies, anything to maintain the, the building, uh, the uh, cleanliness of the building, uh, paper towels, toilet paper, all that is included in here. Um, our energy is all of our uh, gas and electric costs um, to light the building. Um, we also have um, included in here is the uh, the price for gasoline. Uh, we uh, pay the town uh, to use their, their gas pumps. Uh, we get it at a, a discounted rate that, that, that the town gets, so it's not like the same price that you're going to, uh, you know, a mobile station or something like that. Um, so we, we do that. That price is included in here. Uh, next, our transportation budget. Um, this includes, we just have uh, a couple of percentages of our um, uh, secretaries who handle uh, certain work with transportation. Uh, we have any um, uh, payments for any of our uh, regular rider routes. Uh, currently, we have four regular rider routes that we uh, transport. Um, legally, any student that um, uh, in grades K to 8, that's under 2 miles, uh, we have to transport them. And any student that's grades 9 to 12, um, that's over 2.5 miles, we have to transport them. So that's what the, um, the, the expense for that is. Um, this is, as I, I mentioned uh, before, the, the athletic um, uh, trips. Um, this is the amount that it costs to, um, uh, that we pay to go all of, all of our away games uh, for every single season here. And uh, special education. Um, this is uh, the cost uh, of to transfer all of our um, uh, special ed students to the private schools that they attend. Um, you notice that the amount is a lot less from the current year to what we're proposing for next year. Uh, we are um, looking into um, <coughs> uh, changing how we operate uh, the transportation currently. Uh, we're looking to um, either um, buy our own buses or um, uh, uh, bid things ourselves. Uh, so we're anticipating savings and over the next uh, few months We'll have a more uh, concrete plan in, in how we want to handle that. Um, lastly, should be our, our, our benefits is a big part of our budget. Um, it includes any uh, payments that we uh, send down to the state, uh, Social Security, um, uh, PRS, and DCRP. They're uh, payments that we pay for any uh, non-certificated staff um, down to the state. Uh, workers' comp is um, uh, insurance money that we pay to um, um, to, to our insurance company, uh, more for if any any employee of our own um, gets injured on the job, um, that that uh, pays for that. Uh, health benefits is the the biggest number on this slide. Um, this includes um, all of our medical, our dental, our prescription expenses. Um, and we are anticipating a, a larger increase uh, next year. Um, our claims history has been higher than in, in past years, so uh, we're working with our our broker is working with. Um, uh, marketing our, our insurance plan to uh, get th those costs down. Um, our uh, tuition reimbursement, um, that's um, uh, required by our uh, uh, contracts uh, with all of our unions. Uh, we have to um, pay for certain reimbursements for college courses or anything like that. Um, other benefits includes any um, expenses that we uh, pay for our, our custodials, uh, custodial staff. We pay for uh, uniforms for them. Uh, we have uh, some uh, um, uh, uh, percentage of that money also uh, we pay for our um, uh, to administer our uh, COBRA account uh, which is our um, insurance um, one of our insurance accounts and our uh, flexible spending account is included in that and compensated absence um, that is uh, whenever any, somebody retires um, we, we have to pay them out according to the contract for their, their uh, sick days um, so that amount is, is uh, what we anticipate to pay uh, for to people that are retiring. Uh, we don't have as many people retiring uh, f 
the, at the end of this year as opposed to last year, so th that's why that number is is uh, lower. And I think that's the last slide. Um, this was just part of the budget. Um, uh, just to give a, a, a timeline here, uh, the board will be approving the uh, preliminary budget um, at our, um, we're, we're gonna actually change that meeting, I believe, to March uh, 26th, that, that Monday. Um, originally it was scheduled for March 20th, um, but the, um, um, our uh, state aid, uh, uh, the address from the governor was um, uh, moved down uh, two weeks. Uh, so the state is allowing us to, uh, for a week to um, uh, delay to uh, uh, approve the preliminary budget. Uh, so that's why we'll be changing the meeting to March 26th to give us, a, or yeah, March 26th to give us a little more time to uh, properly develop the, the budget. Um, and then our uh, public hearing will be April 24th. Um, at that time, we'll I'll be doing a, a detailed um, presentation on, on all aspects of the budget. I'll have the um, every line, the uh, the total amount, the um, estimated tax increase, and um, Mr. Featherman and I will be doing a, a, a tag team presentation. Um, it. And any questions? No. No. Okay. Great job, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions Thank from you. the audience? Is this the part where you dismiss the audience? No, they're sticking around. All right. Oh. Right then. Just a little bit. Tough crowd. I have a day quick. off tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Just in case you're tuning in. I'll talk quickly. Tomorrow. <laughs> this will be quick. You want me to time you? Just kidding. And there's the pressure. Yeah. Um, all joking aside, I do appreciate Mr. DeVita going through everything. The budget process is, is never easy, and it seems like it gets more difficult um, every year. And so thank you for, uh, for walking everybody through that <coughs> and for uh, obviously assisting the Finance Committee in, uh, in this entire process. We do appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. We're done with presentations. <laughs> Moving on. Um, from the Office of the Business Administrator and Board Secretary under minutes, can I have a motion for B1? So moved. Second. B1 is a motion to approve the public and executive minutes of February 27th, 2018. Any discussion? Roll Ma call. Mr. Pravulovic. Yes. Mr. Schoner. Aye. Mr. Valero. Aye. Mr. Mandela. Aye. Mrs. Dye. Yes. Under business, can I have a motion for B2 through B5? So moved. Second. B2 is a motion to approve the application for use of the Cedar Grove fields and facilities for the Township of Cedar Grove Downtown Advisory Committee. B3 is a motion to accept the generous donation from the Cedar Grove Lacrosse Booster Club for four lacrosse pitchbacks. B4 is a motion to approve the board secretary certification to the Cedar Grove Board of Education. And B5 is a motion to approve the fourth quarter unemployment insurance for the amount listed. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Pravulovich. Yes. Mr. Schoner. Aye. Mr. Valero. Aye. Mr. Mandela. Aye. Mrs. Dye. Yes. Uh, from the Office of the Superintendent of Schools, under personnel, can I have a motion for S1 through S11? So moved. Second. S1 is a motion to approve Mary D. Nunzio, <coughs> media specialist at South End. S2 is a motion to rescind Joseph Morvito from the film club stipend. S3 is a motion to approve Jenna Sweeney for the position of film club co-advisor. S4 is a motion to accept the resignation of Nancy Manley, high school special education teacher, as of June 30th. S5 is a motion to accept the resignation, oh, help me please. Sin. 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 Buildings and grounds custodian. I just didn't want to mess that up. Uh, S6 is a motion to approve uh, Kristen Arluna and Jennifer Coakley, South End Literary Publication stipend. S7 is a motion to approve Jessica Schumacher as a volunteer coach for the Girls Varsity Lacrosse Program. S8 is a motion to approve Christine Carabitas as a substitute as a substitute teacher. S9 is a motion to approve the following employees for the stipend position supporting the spring play for the 17-18 school year. S10 is a motion to approve the following as school volunteers. And S11 is a motion to authorize <coughs> attendance at the following events. Any discussion? Roll Amen. call, please. Mr. Pervulovich. Yes. Mr. Schoner. Aye. Mr. Valero. Aye. Mr. Mandela. Aye. Mrs. Dye. Yes. Under policies, no, we just won't really? anything, right? We're just, okay. No, this is second. Under second, policies, yeah. can I have a motion for S12? So moved. Second. 
S12 is a motion to approve this, the second reading of the following policy updates, revisions, and these are the ones that we heard at the last meeting that we reviewed. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Mr. Berulovich. Yes. Mr. Schoner. Aye. Mr. Valero. Aye. Mr. Mandela. Aye. Mrs. Dye. Yes. The meeting is open to the public for comment on items on or off the agenda. Seeing none, future meeting events. Uh, so right now it says March 20th as our next meeting, but it's actually going to be Monday, March 26th. Uh, here, uh, 6.30 exec, 7.30 regular, and then the following meeting will be April 10th after spring break, same time, same place. Different show. Different show, absolutely. Uh, any further anything? No, ma'am, just everybody be safe tomorrow. Yes. Be smart about it. Stay home. Careful. Enjoy. Enjoy your day. All right. Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Discussion. Roll call. Mr. Pervulovich. Yes. Mr. Schoner. Aye. Mr. Valero. Aye. Mr. Mandela. Aye. Mrs. Dye. Yes. The meeting is over. Have a good night, everybody. <laughs>